All right, how about something involving interest? When you borrow money from a bank or when a bank borrows your money by keeping it for in the same as account, the borrower in each case must pay for the privilege of using the money. The fee this pays is called interest, duh, right? Uh, the amount that's being deposited is the principal. And then, of course, the annual percentage rate is normally called just the interest rate. Now, there's a very simple formula for very simple interest, and that's interest equals principal times rate times time. That's simple interest, guys. Keep that in mind. Um, nothing in the real world deals with simple interest, does not exist. This formula is a bunch of crap, but we use it in math um, as a learning tool. Just know that in the real world, nothing ever uses simple interest. It's always compound interest, which is a totally different formula, much more complicated, um, but this is, like I said, a learning tool. Okay, so... Remember, whenever, and, and this goes for any uh, formula that, that in, deals with uh, interest rates. Anytime you see an R uh, anywhere in a formula in finance that, that represents rate, you know, a 5% rate or a 3% rate, R is always written as a decimal. So 5% always becomes 0.05, 3% would become 0.03, 2.5% uh, would be 0.025, and so on and so forth. Um, so with this uh, case, if we had a thousand dollar deposit for three years at five percent interest, we would slam it into this formula and we get 150 bucks because that's simple interest, right? We're basically just getting five percent of that thousand dollars each year. So now, what if you've got a hundred thousand and you invest it in two different accounts? This is a very common type of question, right? One of them gives you six percent, the other one pays four and a half. You'd always ask yourself, well, why wouldn't you put it all in six percent? Well, maybe the six percent one is risky and you don't want to risk losing your money. Okay, so if her total interest is five thousand twenty-five dollars per year, how much is invested at each rate? So we've read it all the way through. We've identified that it's a question that involves interest and money. So we're thinking, ah, I can use that formula. Interest equals principal times rate times time. Um, and then we're going to go back and we're now going to do our second step, which is to identify the question, well, how much money is invested? So X is going to be um, the amount invested. But it says at each rate, and we've got two different rates. So we're going to arbitrarily just pick the first rate. You could pick the second if you wanted to. And say X is going to be the amount invested at 6%. Simple, easy. Now, some of you might be thinking, okay, then uh, Y is going to be, uh, right, the amount at 4.5%. Uh, and that's fine. And then what do we know about those two amounts? We know that um, X plus Y has to equal all of the money, right? Um, and then we also know something about the interest. We know that uh, the, the total interest is 5025 Well, how do we get interest? It's, remember, it's interest equals principal times rate times time. Well, here's our principal. Here's how much we invested. Here's our rate as a decimal. And our time, remember, is, what is it, what is it, what is it, right? How much, what, how much time? Well, one year, because it just said 5,025 per year. So time is just going to be one in this case. All right, so we can figure out how much interest we get from these two things, because total interest is going to be X times 6%. That's how much interest she makes off this account. And then we have to add how much she makes off the second account, which is Y times 0.045. And that whole amount, right? has to equal uh, 5,025. So we now have two equations, right? We have this one and this one. And we have two unknowns. So we can solve two equations with two unknowns. What do you want to do? Right? There's a couple different ways. You can do the substitution method, the elimination method, uh, the addition method. There's all sorts of different ways. So you see what I mean by uh, you set things up and then you figure out how to solve it depending on the type of situation you have. Now, another way to look at it is instead of using a second variable, you can think of the amount invested in the second account as being 100,000 minus x. But isn't that just taking this first equation here and solving for y? y would equal 100,000 minus x. There you go. Now you have both equations written in terms of x. And by substitution, you can now take this stuff and put it in 
for this y here. And so you'll see what happens on the next couple slides. That's exactly what they did, right? You've got 0.06x and the 0.045 times that big whole junky stuff, which was what we used to have as a y. We put it all together because we know the amount of interest from the two things has to add to the total interest. We do a little math. We solve some stuff. We move stuff around. And we finally get 35,000 in for x. Of course, we can now take 35,000, subtract it from our total of 100,000, get the other piece, which is 65,000, plug both of those back into our equation and make sure that we actually get the 5,025, which we do.